On Wednesday, about 200 supporters of Libertarian presidential candidate Gary Johnson gathered in the nation's capital to demand that viable independent candidates be allowed on stage in the presidential debates alongside Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Today we had a rally in front of the uh, CPD, and that's the Commission on Presidential Debates. And last week uh, they, uh, they said that Gary Johnson and third party candidates could not attend the upcoming presidential debates. So uh, we want to let them know that we're not real happy with that situation. They call themselves a nonpartisan commission. I think at this point we can call utter bull crap on that. To the Commission on Presidential Debates, I say shame on you. Shame, shame on you! you. The CPD said it would exclude Johnson along with Green Party candidate Jill Stein because neither of them had reached the organization's third criterion for debate, which is receiving an average of at least 15 percent support in five specific polls among voters the CPD has selected as their official references. The CPD has long been criticized for excluding third party candidates. But this year the pressure is mounting as the two major party candidates face historic disapproval ratings and as it's becoming more and more difficult for the independent nonprofit, which was created exclusively by Democrats and Republicans, to defend its impartiality. He's on the ballot in all 50 states. Granted, every organization has to have standards, but this number, 15 percent, is an arbitrary number made up by the CPD. You're talking about Republicans that want open debates. You're talking about Democrats that want open debates. You're talking about independents that want open debates. Uh, libertarians, green. So this is not a partisan issue. I think a lot of people would be surprised to know that a poll like the New York Times poll, which is one of the CPD polls, uh, at times only polls as little as 835 people. In, in some of the polls, they uh, only contact people that have landlines. So that's going to skew the uh, polls uh, 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 older. It's true that younger voters make up the overwhelming support base for Gary Johnson. In a Quinnipiac poll that came out last week, Johnson and Clinton were neck and neck among voters aged 18 to 34 in a four-way race. He's socially liberal, he's fiscally conservative. I think we have a high belief in personal responsibility and you know we're tired of um, our taxes getting taken from us when all we're trying to do is work hard and uh, be good citizens. This generation with the internet and everything, they're not as hooked to the mainstream media and they're kind of just going off of social media and going off of independent media and hey, people everyone. are more free to make I'm their Kim own Roman. choices, which is why they're not just I'm falling into the, in line to the two-party system anymore. Johnson supporters often tout the diversity of their support base, but people here on Wednesday seemed overwhelmingly to lean more Republican than Democrat. Um, I voted in the Republican primary for John Kasich. I voted for uh, Marco Rubio. And I supported uh, Rand Paul this year Everyone's before he dropped out. I actually voted in the Democratic primaries for Bernie Sanders. Not because of his policies, but because he is a qualified, honest candidate. So uh, you're a capitalist, you would say? Pretty much. How many people here are libertarians? <laughs> okay. So how many people here are Republicans. Register. How many people here are Democrats? Be, be loud, Democrats. Be loud. We got one! Go there! And how many people here are independents? While it's true that according to polls, Johnson pulls as many voters leaning towards Clinton as are leaning towards Trump, the vast majority of his supporters are political independents, energized primarily by Johnson's message of fiscal conservatism and abhorrence of any kind of government. If we elect Gary Johnson, I think that we're going to see 100, 200, 300 smart, successful business people step out of the shadows. They're going to be inspired by the fact that someone like Gary Johnson has become president of the United States, and I think they're going to enter politics. The answer isn't more government bureaucracy. It isn't more oversight. It's to let it's to let local communities, to let people decide for themselves uh, through the free market, none of the crony capitalism that we see going on nowadays. As governor of New Mexico, Gary Johnson implemented his libertarian philosophy by vetoing almost 750 bills, accelerating the privatization of prisons and schools, cutting taxes and waging a war on labor and labor protection laws. Things that many criticize him for, but not as much here. Does the privatization issue of prisons and education bother you at all? No, I'm, uh, I think everything should be privatized. The basic issue for us is choice on how you live your life. And I think everyone should have the opportunity to go to a private school, go to a private hospital. Basically, I don't believe that uh, the government is good at doing uh, any of those things. 
I believe that some of the times when the privatization turned out to be bad is not because uh, it's not because uh, it is inherently a bad thing, it's just that it was poorly implemented. At the end of the day, Johnson supporters say it's the free market's ability to self-regulate that would fix what they call crony capitalism and a bloated bureaucracy. Make capitalism pure, they say, and the economy will balance itself out. At least if you get the government out of there, uh, then you can have those natural economic, for, um, natural market forces, excuse me, to allow individuals to see a need and to compete against these uh, giant corporations.